I got an invitation to a gay hookup. It was Friday night and I was at work. There was going to be an external audit on Monday, so I was helping make sure the books looked right and everything was in order. I was supposed to be having fun tonight with my friends and unwinding, but instead, I was stuck here. It was no secret that I hated my job, but what choice did I have? I had bills to pay. The promise of a bonus at the end of the month also prompted me to do the extra work. The only thing making it worse was that Devin, the boss's son, and my supervisor were there. He and I never got along since day one. I don't like the guy, neither does he like me. I feel like he's spoiled and he's always trying to make me look bad to his dad. Before he came to work here, I was going to get his position, but nepotism has a home here, so I guess I was out of the question. I feel like he's a spoiled brat with zero work ethic. If it was not for his dad, who was the kindest man I had ever met, then I would have quit long time ago. I had no life of my own. Most of my time was spent in the office, working. It was not surprising that I had no love life of my own. It was not just because of how busy I was. I was just bored by everyone I met. The dating pool was infested nowadays. People failed to value relationships. They acted as if it was all a game. I wanted no part of that. I wanted something that would last. I wanted a best friend, someone I could depend on, and a partner in crime, all in one. My standards were simply too high for anyone, so why did I even bother? I did say that I had no love life, but that did not mean that I did not have a crush. There was a cute guy called Theo from the tech department. He always brought fresh energy to the office. He was kind, helpful, and very funny. It was impossible not to fall under his spell. It was safe to say that I was mildly interested in him, but I was never going to make a move. I was just too shy. He had beautiful brown skin, dark eyes with long lashes, a tall and lean physique, and short dark hair. He liked wearing sportswear, which was a welcome reprieve from the boring pants and shirts everyone wore here. He was also very helpful. He never complained when I called him 10 times a day to help me with tech-related stuff. I hoped that one day we could hang out outside of work, but I had no such luck. I was busy with the paperwork when my phone buzzed. I thought of ignoring it, but my brain was already turning to mush just by sitting there. I figured that a five minute break wouldn't hurt. Also, Devin was nowhere to be found, which meant that I could do what I wanted. So then rebellious little me decided to check what the message was. My jaw dropped when I saw what the message said. I was very puzzled. I was not expecting that in the least. Unknown, what are you wearing? Me, who is this? Unknown, this is hot nerd. Have you forgotten me already? Naughty but nice? Me, sorry, what are you talking about? Unknown. I see, you are shy. Do not be. Once I come over to your place and keep the promise I made to you, then you will not be so shy. This intrigued me. Why was such a weird thing happening to me of all people? I was about to block the person, but I wanted to know more. Maybe I was bored and it would come to regret it, but I was tired of all the monotonous life that I had led. Even if it was just indulging a troll, I needed a break. Me, you must have gotten the wrong number. Bold of you to assume that I am playing dumb though. Unknown. Sorry, dude. I blue ticket the message, but then he started typing again. Unknown. Some people are into that. I guess I got the wrong number. Let me ask the guy who gave me the number. Me. Sure. You're a bold girl, though. Unknown. I'm not a girl. What makes you think that? Me. You said a guy gave you the number. I'm a guy as well. Unknown. Oh, I see. Let me log onto the site. I met him and ask him what's going on. Me. Good luck, dude. Unknown. So he blocked me. Me. What? Dude, that sucks. People are weird. Unknown. I knew it was too good to be real. You do not find Channing Tatum's doppelganger on a site like this. What was I thinking? Me. The struggle is real. Next time, try to find someone the organic way. Unknown. Oh, really? If only I could go out. I'm always busy with work. I pretty much live here. I was thinking of ditching since I'm one of the last people here, but yeah, those plans fell through. Same here, I want a dish so bad. I think that I've been glued to this chair for the past 16 hours. You. Well, then that sucks. Same boat. I would like to know what you would do if you ditched. Me. I think I would sleep for more than five hours. Unknown. Lay. No hot hookups or anything? Me. I have not had a hookup in so long, I think my libido is non-existent now. Unknown. Same here. So then we continue to text, complaining about our jobs felt nice to speak to someone in between the breaks that I got. It made the night much less boring and much more bearable. Soon enough, it was nearly midnight, and it was time to go home. I went over to Devin's office to tell him that I was now leaving. I was so grateful that I had bought myself a car a few weeks ago. 
It was not fun at all to struggle to find an Uber on weeknights. Most of the time I would have no choice but to endure taking a ride from Devin. I knocked on his door to tell him that I was going now. I could not believe that he was actually on his phone. His work's not even halfway done. I would not be surprised if I found it on my desk tomorrow morning. It was something that only he would have the guts to do. I silently reminded myself that I needed a job. With the current economy, quitting one's job was very risky. I have friends who were qualified for good jobs who had been sitting at home for several months. It was not fun, so I gritted my teeth and I told him that I was on my way. Sure, whatever, he said as he continued to scroll through his phone. I turned to walk out of his office. Oh, and Bill, he said. I turned to look at him. His snow white hair was perfectly styled with not a hair out of place, and he was clean shaven. His icy blue eyes looked bored just at the sight of me. The feeling is mutual, buddy, I thought to myself. Yes, I forced a smile. Please do take this paperwork to your desk. I want you to have a look at it, he said. Great, will do, sir, I smiled. I left the office before he even said another word to me. The only thoughts comforting me were those of my bed waiting for me. Going home now, just got out of work. I'm so tired. Unknown. Lucky you, I'm still here. Me. Good luck, though. I sent the text as I got into my car. I started the engine and then I drove off. I arrived home in a couple of minutes. One of the benefits of working for my company was that I had gotten a beautiful apartment close to work at a discounted rate. As soon as I got home, I went to bed and slept. I had a dreamless sleep due to my tiredness. I was glad that I had an uneventful night. I suffered from a few sleeping problems that had manifested when I was in college. I got sleep paralysis and night terrors quite often. No pills worked for me, so I had to endure it. Sometimes I did not experience them, and those were the happiest times of my life. I woke up the next morning feeling refreshed until I remembered that I had to go to work. That was not the thing that I wanted to do especially today, but I got up and went to take a shower. The water felt so relaxing on my skin and I felt as I could stay there forever. In all honesty, I wanted to. When I got out, I got dressed and ate some cereal. As I was eating, my phone buzzed with a message. I checked who it was and I saw that it was unknown from yesterday. I could not help but smile. I had only known this guy for a few hours, but I thought that we were going to be very good friends. Unknown. Good morning, you. Me. Hey there. What are you up to today? Unknown. I have an off day, so lucky me. You want to hang out? Me. Can't. I'm the only one working today. It's for extra pay and I need the cash to assist with my mother's medical bills. Unknown. Sorry about that. I wish my mom was still alive. Me. I'm sorry to hear of her passing. So then, he and I began talking more and more frequently. He seemed to get me. We were both suffering from the stress that is adulthood, and that brought us closer. I got to know who he was and what his dreams were. He told me that he did not like his job. He was just doing it so that his family would approve. He also told me that he wanted to do something else with his life, something in the field of medicine. He wanted to become a male nurse. We talked mostly during the night, in between breaks from our work. I realized that we did not know each other's names the other day, and we talked about that. What's your name, by the way? Unknown. My friends call me Vince. Me. Oh, I'm Bill. Vince. I know a Bill. Me. I hope that I'm still your favorite Bill. Vince. Of course, you will always be my favorite Bill. I started to get used to talking to him, and I started looking forward to his message. One day, we both had an off day, which was something so rare. Due to how far he was, he could not visit me, but we scheduled a call. My heart beat fast when I saw the incoming call. Hi, he said. Damn, I like the sound of his voice. It also sounded very familiar. I could not quite place where I had heard him before. But yes, he sounded like someone that I knew. Hey there, I chuckled a bit. Why are you laughing, he asked. Right, nothing, I giggled. I got very giggly when I was nervous, which was my worst character trait. The number of times I giggled during a time when I was in trouble at school was countless. I had only managed to land myself in more trouble. Really, he said. My tummy suddenly got all tingly. Was I so nervous? It's just a call. Yes, yeah, so sorry about that. I get giggly when I'm nervous, I said. So I make you nervous, he asked. Um, I... I began. I did not want to admit that I was nervous. It's okay, I'm just messing with you, he laughed. After that, I loosened up and I started to talk to him. It was so much better on a call. We chatted for hours. Hey, we should meet sometime soon, I asked. Most definitely. Where do you live? He asked. Greendale Village, I said. Oh, I work near there, but I live in Silver Peaks, he said. Oh, where do you work? I asked. Aerial Banking and Financial Services, he said. 
No way, I work there as well, I said in delight. Oh my god, we must have already met, he said. Oh really? This is so cool, we have to meet in person at work tomorrow, I said. Nah, I need it to be more special. Drinks at Lonnie's pub? He asked. Yeah, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Cannot wait to see you there, he said. We hung up soon after that because we had some work to do. I turned our conversation in my head for a while, wondering who he was. He said that he lived in Silver Peaks. Wait, did Theo not live in Silver Peaks? Was it him? Oh my word. I would die if it was him. But wait, he had said his name was Vince. Theo's name is not Vince, or was it? I went to our company's website and checked on the section about our staff. It was a long shot looking for him, as only the higher up people were on the website. But he was very important in the tech department, so I was sure that I would find him. Sure enough, I found him. My eyes widened and shocked as I noticed his full name was Vince Theodore Roberts. I screamed at that moment. The gods were smiling down upon me for sure. Theo was the guy that I had been speaking to. I wonder if he knew that it was me. I hoped that he did not expect me to be the other Bill from the HR department. He was considerably better looking than me. I got along with the rest of my day. I ordered some takeout and watched some Netflix. I binge watched the second season of The Witcher, which had just come out a few months ago. It was one of my favorite shows. Later on, I took a break from the series and texted Vince. It was evident that we, both of us were very excited about meeting each other the next day. The next day, I felt as if the day was dragging more than usual. Devin was extra annoying, making us work faster for no reason. You would think that he was going to heaven. I did not even get a chance to talk to Theo the whole day. I did see him once, and I had smiled at him though. He had smiled back at me in a friendly manner. I felt my insides turn weak at his million dollar smile. I could not wait for tonight. I had broken my own rules and I had worn black jeans and some sneakers to work. It was a bit more casual than my usual style, but I wanted to impress him. When the clock finally struck for me to go home, I nearly leaped from joy. Lonnie's was a few minutes away from our workplace, so I decided to walk instead of drive. I knew for certain that I would not find parking at the time when everyone was having after work drink. I walked in for a couple of minutes and was soon at the pub. It was dimly lit with some music playing through the speakers. There was already a few people drinking, most of them were wearing formal wear. They probably came to drink away the stress of their jobs. I texted him to ask where he was. He said he was wearing a blue shirt. I told him that I was wearing a black one. I looked around and saw Theo sitting alone at the bar. He was wearing a greenish bluish shirt. I figured that it could be seen as blue in some people's eyes. Hey there, I said to him. Hey, what a nice surprise, he said. Gosh, he was so funny, acting as if he was not expecting me. Classic. Same, of all places, I giggled, pulling him in for a hug. He hugged me back, but when he pulled away, he was giving me a strange look. Yes, I did not know that you liked this pub. It's a nice place to have a colleague to moan about work, too, he said. Yep, you've been doing that all this week. At least now you can do it in person, I chuckled. He looked at me in confusion. When we were texting, I explained. Maybe he did not remember, or my texts were not important to him. That would not be the first time I was treated like that. I don't know what you're talking about, Bill, he said. I've been texting you all week. We work in the same company, you and I. I arranged to meet here today, I said. Nope, he gave me a blank look. Then who had I been talking to? He was the only person that matched the person that I had been texting. Maybe someone had been playing a cruel prank on me. I think you were talking to me, a very familiar voice said. I smiled as I recognized it, as the one that I had spoken to yesterday. I turned around and the person I saw was the one person that I did not expect to see. It was Devin. To be continued. I got an invite to a gay hookup, part two. To say that I was shocked would be an understatement. I was gobsmacked, flabbergasted, and dumbstruck. I certainly felt very dizzy. I held onto the counter to balance myself. Surely, I was having a bad dream. How could have I been talking to someone I hated for several weeks and developed a friendship without knowing? This was against the laws of nature. To me, he had been the cold, calculating boss's son, not someone who had feelings or actually liked anyone. My mind was short-circuiting at that moment, and I did not think that I was going to be okay in a while. I tried to think, make sense of the whole thing, but I came up with nothing. He also looked shocked to see me as well. He was looking me up and down with those reptilian eyes of his, as if I was something that he had picked from the bottom of his shoe. Well, I was also not happy that it had been him that I had been talking to. Deep regret was the other feeling lying under all the emotions I was feeling. I regretted replying to that text message. 
I wished that I had not decided to keep on talking to him. Curiosity had led me somewhere I had not intended. I regretted spending all that time talking to him. What had I been thinking? You? I spat out, venom in my voice. Yes, me. I could have never guessed that you of all people would be the person I was talking to. I was hoping that it would be Bill from HR. He never crossed my mind. Even once, he laughed bitterly. Sorry to burst your bubble then, your highness, I said sarcastically. Would anyone care to explain to me what's going on? Theo suddenly interrupted us. I had completely forgotten about him. Then disappointment set in. I had wanted it to be Theo so much. Of course, things would turn out this way. It was like something out of a Wattpad book. I will explain to you later, I said to him. Oh, you thought I was Theo? Theo who has a girlfriend? Devin said. He caught me off guard. He had all the warmth of an ice glacier, with perfect cold lips sneering at me. I cannot believe that I was smiling at his words, his voice just yesterday. That went to show how much life sucked. I did not know that Theo had a girlfriend. I had gotten vibes from him. I guessed that I had misread. Now how was I going to look at him in the eyes again? It was going to be so awkward at work from that day on. How could I have been so stupid, thinking that greenish blue was a kind of blue? That should have been a sign from the beginning. She said your name was Vince. Theo's name is Vince, I said, salvaging for the last bit of hope I had. My second name is Vince. I was not going to tell my real name to someone that I had never met before. Worst of all, when I found out that I was in the same company as you. I could not let you find out that I was the boss's son. I did not want to be treated differently. His voice cracked and his eyes glazed over. But then he blinked and he was back to being his old self again. He was so good at putting up that facade of not caring. What I knew was that the ones who acted like they did not care were the ones who cared the most. I see, I said. There was nothing more I could say to him at that moment. I needed to process all that had just occurred, but not in front of him. There was so much to unpack here. I was still in disbelief. I was going to be very strange to be around them both at work. I think I need to go now, I said to them. I did not wait for a response. I just left them standing there. I felt a pair of eyes burning onto my back. I knew without a doubt who the glare belonged to. Only he could have icy eyes that burn. I walked as if on autopilot. I did everything out of habit, not because I was paying attention to what I was doing. I do not even know when I even got in my car and drove off. I just remember arriving at home and going to bed. I felt my phone buzzing with calls and texts, but I ignored all of them. I was not in the mood to deal with anyone at that moment. I felt as if the rug had been ripped from beneath my feet. The one time that I had met someone decent whom I liked and he had turned out to be this person I did not like at work. It was not fair. I was tired of feeling this way. I was tired of feeling the pain of being alone. Maybe that was why I had started talking to the person who was not right for me. There was no point in lamenting right now. The damage had been done. No, it had not been done. I would not let him affect me, nor would I let him mean anything more than he was. I was much smarter than that. I was going to carry on with my life like everything was normal. I was going to treat him professionally, and there was nothing that would make me crack. I was going to pretend as if none of this had even happened. It was what was best for everyone involved. I needed a drink. This was not something I wanted to deal with while sober. But then I went out for a drive. I bought a few bottles of beer at the local market and went back home. I then began to drink them while sitting on the patio, thinking of the past few hours. Luckily for me, it was the weekend, so I did not have to go into work. At least I had been given that small comfort. Monday. My stomach had been the knot all weekend. I kept on refreshing my emails, expecting an email saying that I was fired. It would not be a surprise to me at all. Devin had the power to hire and fire if he wanted to. He would get rid of me and no one would bat an eye. He had that kind of power. I was at his mercy. I went in to work on Monday, expecting a sacking, but I got quite the opposite. He did not call me to his office once. When he needed something, his secretary emailed me, and I would send it over to her. Usually, he would be making me run errands that were not part of my job description. On the other hand, I had talked things through with Theo. He was very understanding of the whole situation, and he did not make me feel bad for it. I was very happy that he and I were okay now. I did not think that I would be able to handle more awkwardness at work. Whatever I liked it or not, I did have to talk to Devin sometime soon. Later on that day, I was called by his dad into his office. I was very surprised because his dad barely called me into his office. He usually communicated via emails and calls. I knocked on the door and entered the office. Standing there was the one and only Devin. 
I almost turned around and went back, but I controlled myself. Good afternoon, sir, I said. Good afternoon, Bill, his dad said. You called for me? I asked. Yes, I have an important business trip to attend. I was supposed to get through this paperwork, but now I have to leave. I called you here because I want to put the two of you in charge for a few days. The both of you are hard workers, so I'm sure that you'll be able to handle the company for a few days, he said. My eyes widened in shock. What an opportunity. A great way to prove myself to the boss, even if it involved working with Devin. Of course, sir, I said. So then I got stuck sharing an office with Devin for a few days. The tension could be cut by a knife. We barely said a word to each other while working together. What surprised me, though, was that he was good at his job. He had always seemed lazy, assigning any grunt work to some employee, but now he was working efficiently. There was also something else there. The feelings had not gone away in the space of some time. I could not forget the glimpse of what I had caught of him. I could not help but desire to see him like that again. Now that I had seen what lay beneath that mask, I wanted to rip it off, toss it in the fire. What lay beneath was so much more beautiful. Eventually, we started talking again. It started with greetings and small requests, but we got friendlier. I found out that he was very smart. He always seemed to be a spoiled brat a few days ago, but now was forced to reevaluate my opinion of him. He was most likely not as bad as I had initially thought. Somehow, we fell into a friendlier relationship. By the time his dad came back, we were on good terms with each other. We had debates about work and how to solve the problems that we had faced in this institution. I also found out why he never seemed to have time to do the paperwork. He was completing a short course on medicine. Once I knew that, I covered for him to the best of my ability. The more I was exposed to the side of him that was warm, the more I started to feel things that I had never expected I would feel in a million years. I found myself drawn to him. I would catch myself staring at him sometimes, admiring how his eyes looked when they caught the sun. He caught me staring one day. He looked at me with a knowing look on his face, daring me to keep looking at him daring me to stay into the windows of his soul and figure out who he was. I looked away as if burnt by a hot poker. I knew for certain that whatever was brewing between us was going to come to a crescendo one day. I could not wait for that day, but I was also scared. I felt exposed. I had not let go of his past self, the white wolf. I still caught glimpses of the warrior wolf now and then. He was beautiful yet frightening, if that made any sense. I wanted him to spare me, but I also wanted him to feed on me and see if I was enough for him. But what could I do? He was my boss's son. I could not do anything about it. I was sure that I would look bad if I started anything with him, so I left him alone, even though a feral part of me wanted to disobey the rules. Yes, I wanted to sin. Sin truly is the sweetest poison, one you will die drinking out of, unquenchable thirst. I was not prepared when he told me that he was leaving the company to pursue medicine. I was heartbroken. I did not want to lie. Hey you, he said when I opened the door for him. I had invited him over to hang out since we had never hung out. Hey, Trouble, I said. Why are you calling me Trouble, he asked, his mouth forming an O. I stared at his mouth for a second, but then I decided to look away before he caught me staring at his lush mouth. Um, I started giggling. I hope that you're still able to giggle once I kick your ass on FIFA, he smirked. In your dreams, sweetie, I smirked. We caught each other's eyes. The challenge was on. Two hours later. So he had made true on his promise and showed me fire at FIFA. I kept on begging him for one more game, but he was just too good. What do you want to eat? I asked. All the playing and taking all my energy had left me very tired, so I needed to get something to eat. Takeaways? He asked. Yep, I cannot cook, I shrugged. The life of a bachelor. Me either, lol. I feel like a cheeseburger, what about you? He asked. Same here, actually, I said. So then we ordered some takeaway. I went back to sit with him after ordering our food. So what'd you like to do next? I asked him. No idea. What do you have in mind? He asked, turning to look at me. He looked extra good tonight. I was having a hard time trying to keep my hands to myself. This was going to be so difficult, especially with his scent on my nose. Why are you looking at me? He asked. I'm not. I'm looking behind you, I said. Liar. Then he started to lean in. I automatically leaned into him and our lips connected. I felt desire course through my vein as our lips moved in sync. I grabbed his shirt and pulled him closer to me. I kissed him slowly but passionately, savoring the sweet taste of him. He started to trail kisses on my neck and I kissed his neck back. He smelled so good. His scent continued to drive me wild. Everything about him drove me wild. Everywhere he touched me, I felt tingles. I wanted and needed more of his touch. 
I could not do without it at the moment. Just as things were heating up, the enemy of progress, my doorbell rang. I groaned as I pulled away from him. I ran my fingers through my hair and smoothed my shirt over so it looked more presentable. I opened the door and got our food. I did not look the delivery guy in the eye as I took our food. I was way too flustered over the hot makeout session that I had just partaken in. I tipped him and he went off on his way. Well then, I guess our food is here, I said. I thought that it would never come. I'm so hungry that I could eat a cow, he said. Heh, <laughs> you're about to eat me just now, I teased. I enjoyed watching all the color rush to his cheek. He was too damn cute for his good. Right, funny, he said in a deadpan voice. But I could see the twinkle in his eyes. He was deeply amused by what I had just said. Well then, let us eat. I'm starving, I said. We each took our burgers and ate them while we watched a movie on Netflix. After that, we got up to a few things. I have to say our night was very nice. The next morning. We had cuddled and kissed the previous night. That was all. We were not ready to go all the way. At breakfast, we talked about how we were going to proceed with the whole thing. So, what are we going to do? He asked. I do not know about you, but last night meant something to me. I took the risk and I told him how I felt. Even though there was a chance for rejection, I could take it. Me too. It was not just a random hookup. I genuinely like you, just so you know, he said, looking down. And I like you too, I said. Maybe we could explore this. See where it's leading, he asked. Yes, that's a wonderful idea. I would love to see where this connection is going to lead us, I smiled, holding his hand. And so we did just that. In between our busy schedules, we went on several dates. It did not take a rocket scientist to figure out that we were very attracted to each other. So then, we officially started dating a few weeks after. I was very happy that his father approved of us. I had not expected it, but it was a very pleasant surprise. He was also doing very well in this course for medicine, which was no surprise due to how smart he was. I still could not believe that we had fallen in love. Love had never been something that found me. One thing I learned was that love is not something that you can chase. It decides when it comes to you and in which form. Resistance is futile. It only strengthens the relationship, if anything. I had been wrong to think that he was not a good person. Misconceptions about other people are harmful. Everyone has that sweet side to them. I managed to tame my white wolf and I found love that I was sure would last for a long time. At least, that was what I had hoped. You never know with love, it's so volatile. When I look back, I do not regret answering that text. That is one thing I would do over and over again. All thanks to an invitation to a hookup and a wrong number. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.